Welcome to Image Processing with ArcGIS Pro. 12 YouTube videos summarize image processing lab exercises available in a step-by-step -step lab manual that accompanies this textbook. Download the lab manuals at the site shown and obtain more textbook information at the second site shown publisher's website. Download the lab manual and data used in the lab exercises if you want to use the step-by-step -step instructions and process the imagery and DEMs while viewing the YouTube videos. The examples used in the videos and lab manual are discussed and shown in the textbook, improving GIS student understanding of essential remote sensing principles and technology while learning how to process and enhance images and DEMs using ArcGIS Pro. The lab manual, shown, a page is shown in the upper right, and 12 YouTube videos are designed for GIS instructors, students, and users who want to do their own processing, enhancement, and information extraction of satellite and airborne images and DEMs using ArcGIS Pro. You can see the 12 exercises, the tutorials um, listed here. They cover um, a broad range of image processing tasks, algorithms, and help you find where these tasks are located on the various menus in ArcGIS Pro. The lab exercises require ArcGIS Spatial Analyst Extension. Contact Jealous at ls-geospatial.com for any questions or comments and visit the publisher's website for more information and resources on the textbook. Lab 2 covers basic image enhancement with some plotting. Here we are looking at the lab manual step-by-step -step instruction for Lab 2. This video will quickly cover these seven topics. Here you can see the Lab 2 um, ArcGIS Pro project. On the right side is the catalog and you can see we're in the Lab 2 Image Enhancement folder, and down here is the NAIP, which is a Department of Agricultural Multispectral Data Set, Airborne Data Set, with four bands. And when you open this, there's the four bands, um, collected with one meter resolution. And this is the metadata. So first I'll just drag the image, and it comes up. Um, as a natural color image, just the way NAIP is organized. The bands 1, 2, 3 are um, a little different. Usually red is number 3 and green is number 2 and blue is number 1 for shorter wavelengths having lower numbers. To load this data you can also go up here and add data. So as I said, the metadata is here. I haven't figured out how to open it in ArcGIS. It's a text file, so if I go to view metadata and it comes up and there's there's nothing here so you think well this isn't very good the department of agriculture didn't didn't put anything there but that's not true it's you go to your windows or mac directory and you can see this text file you just double click on it and it's a very extensive metadata explaining the imagery all sorts of things about how they flew it, the accuracy. So you want to look around for metadata, especially from government sources, because they typically have that. Um, we're going to calculate statistics next. Then we can go over here to the catalog, right click, see calculate statistics. And I'll just redo it here. So it's the input is our four banded image. We're skipping nothing. All the pixels are going to be calculated for the statistics, nothing's going to be ignored, and all you do is hit run. And this ensures all your processing going forward will be done correctly. Got to have the statistics. Now I want to look at each band individually, and so um, the bands represent the following wavelengths. Band 1 is red light, band 2 is green, and band 3 is a shorter wavelength blue, then band 4 is the near IR light. So we're going to take our four banded file, go up to appearance, and this band combination, and this is one of the ways that we can make a black and white image. So I always do the custom, and we're just going to do band 1 first, which is the red, and we'll call it red. And you can see now we have um, that band. 
and if we want to do the other bands um, we can actually add more maps more maps in the view so let's insert another map drag our NAIP into this map go back up to appearance go to band combination custom and make this green this is just one method that we can go to a grayscale image the others with a symbology tab in the stretch so this is green so I'll do the other two images so here I've got four tabs each one has a different grayscale band so the good the good thing about this band combination if you're going to work with different NAIP data I and mean, you can just click on one of these custom um, stretches that you did and it'll automatically turn it into a grayscale. So here's band 4, band 1, band 2, and band 3. And then what we want to do is change these names. So we actually go over here so we don't lose track because you got to remember this is actually red, this is green, this is blue, and that's near IR. So what we can do is right click on this, go to properties, and change the name to red. So now we know that tab, that view, is red. I'll go ahead and do it on all of these. That same process as I bring this up, I just right click, go to properties, and this one will be green. So now you see I've completed renaming the four tabs. Now we want to put them in order of wavelength. So let's move blue over here and green there. So now we have it in increasing wavelength. So blue green, red, near IR. Now a really good tool here is link these four views. Center and scale. So now I can zoom in and roam around and click through and see how it varies. So here I'm over a golf course. You can see reflected blue light. The irrigated grass is pretty gray brighter in green this is why we see green darker in red the chlorophyll in the grass is absorbing the red light go to near IR totally different it's healthy grass highly reflective to visible light so this is a very handy tool to examine and compare the four bands so we'll go back to zoom to layer and what we're going to do next is create a color composite, um, a natural color and a color infrared from these bands. So a good feature with ArcGIS Pro is here's our maps. These tabs are actually um, stored over in catalog and so I can close them but I don't lose them in my project. Now we're going to make a new map view and create a color natural color and a color infrared image. So I make a new map over here and I drag our data in four banded image in twice they're both perceived to be natural color but we know this one is natural color because we can tell it with our eyes. But we want to make this one color infrared and I've already done it once and had a issue so you're going to see that in my band combination which I'm going to use I'm going to go custom again and to make a color infrared from NAIP I have band 4 in the red gun, the red light in the green gun and the reflected green light in the blue gun. So this is a color infrared and we'll just call it CIR version 2. So you can see we have these two images with no stretch. If I highlight this top one, um, what we want to do is go up here to the effects and swipe. Notice that comes up a very effective way to compare layers inside of one map and so if I zoom in down in this corner I press the C key and I can move around 
you can't move around when you're in this because it just opens up the slider. So you have to press the C key on the keyboard, move around, and um, again, compare the two images. Very powerful way to, to analyze imagery using multiple color images or even black and white in one map view and using the swipe tool. Now we want to enhance this image. And there's different ways to do that. Like everything in Pro, there's different ways to do it. We've highlighted our color infrared. We can go up here to stretch type, make sure it's no stretch, and say go to percent clip. And you can see I'll turn off the sonar so it doesn't fly. Tremendous difference in the amount of information. None. Percent clip. Easier to interpret with a different kind of a stretch. Standard deviations, a little different. These are different stretches that are explained in the textbook. So we'll go back to percent clip. Zoom to layer. Another tool up here is the gamma, and you can change this and it changes the midtones, which can be very helpful for certain kinds of imagery. And this is just brightness and contrast. So I'll go back to stretch type and I'll go to none. And another way to stretch data and work with it is the symbology tab. So you can access it here. And once it's up, you see it's, it's a tab here that you can float or keep docked. And here we can see our, our uh, band combination, 412, which is the color infrared, no stretch. But again, we have another way to do percent clip. And we can also look at the histograms. So the gray is what it looked like before any stretch with this pronounced dark set of pixels at a low DN. The, this is um, near infrared. This is green, or rather reflected red light. This is reflected green light. And notice there's this very large area that, that is not, has no, no brightness values. And that's why the stretch is so effective. We're actually sending all these pixels to, to white, all these pixels down here to black. And so we're really enhancing the image. You can move these bars, which sometimes is very helpful. But it doesn't always work. I find that. Um, ah, there we go. So I'm making the blue band much brighter. And so you can change a lot of things, and this should reset it. Um, it may not work very well. Sometimes I get this gets hung up, and if it does, see if we can go back to none, if it'll change back. It did, good. Uh, and sometimes if you have problems, you, you go to this stretch, then you go back to RGB and go back to, say, percent clip. But notice when I went and did that, I lost my color infrared. Four, one, two. Now what we want to do is export this as a GIS-ready um, enhanced color image. So one of the ways to do that is right-click our, our enhanced image that we see um, as a temporary image. Go to Data, Export Raster. See the Output Raster data set, that's the name that you want to give this. We want to call it CIR. I'll call it number two, because I've been doing this a little bit this morning. You can see it's got a, the coordinate information is there. We come down here, it's 8-bit eight, eight unsigned, which is the uh, original data. And then you use the renderer to save the stretch that's on here and a lot of times it'll click automatically the force RGB so we're going to get a red green blue image out and we'll say okay and we export it and it'll reappear in our view and so now we have an image that we can put into any GIS upload to Google Earth whatever you want that's enhanced You'll notice as I move around, I'm still in the swipe tool. And the only way I figured out to get rid of that is to hit the map and explore button. 
Now what we want to do is create a, a map with a north arrow and a scale bar so that we can print it out as a JPEG and distribute it. And to do that, we go up to Insert, a new layout. We'll make it letter size. It's great, all these different um, sizes for printers. And there's our layout. See, it's got the inches on top because I'm not in a metric system by my defaults that I did in options. Then I do a map frame and I say, I want to pick this one, but notice the default extent. I can do lots of different things and I'm going to make it this big. And there's our image. And I've got these turned on and if I turn those off, I think eventually that'll go away as I do some work. So this is our image in there. Now what we want to do is add a north arrow. See, I'm in the insert button. I can, and, what, and here you, you always add a box first. And there's the north arrow, a scale bar. Oh, we'll just pick the symbol. We're just doing defaults, but you can see that in the real world, you would you could spend a lot of time working on this. And then text. So I want to do text up here. See how small it is? CRR image of California. And and that's not that's not very acceptable. So if I double click on this, sometimes you have to go outside, there it is. You get the, the box around it, and then it'll show up with this text box. See our image of California, the general, the text symbol is what we want to go for. We want to make this bigger. So we'll make it like 20. And then you apply it. I'll make it a little bigger. And move it over here. I'm going to save my MXD is it with a different name. Save as Lab 2. Now what I really want to do is focus on this golf course. And it's tricky. And so you go up to this Layout tab and you Activate. And Activate actually enables you to move what's in the map. It's not moving the boundary, so I can send this up here and just bring in the golf course. And then I go and I go back to layout and I close the activation. You can see it's you can spend a lot of time making this map a lot better, but I can't get rid of this white here unless I activate again. So I'm going to activate. I'll move this down to the bottom. And then I click layout again and close activation. And so I've got my image ready to go. And if I want to share it as a JPEG, I touch this share tab, go to layout. And you can see it's going to be a JPEG. I'll give it a name. CIR map. If I clip it to the graphics extent, it'll go right around the edge and, and I won't have any white. So that's a, a choice, depends. And you can change the quality. So I want to have that golf course show up pretty well. So I'll make it 95%. And and if you don't like if you want 300 dpi, say it's going to go into publication, um, be better instead of 200, 300. The rest is acceptable. And you export. It's completed. And I'll open it up. And there it is. That's our map. So that concludes some basic enhancements and some plotting for Lab 2.